Hi, in this video we're going to take a look at this soldering station from BEST. It's the BST-933B, as is highlighted by this terrible font on the front of the unit. And it might look quite familiar to you because it's essentially a copy of the JBC CD-2BE soldering station, which is a very popular high-end soldering station used professionally and also uh, with hobbyists who want something a little bit more high-end. That JBC soldering station costs around 400 to 450 pounds depending on who you're buying it from and the delivery costs. This is um, coming in at around 190 pounds so the Banggood website has this for 211 pound delivered but there is a 10% voucher underneath on the listing which means that you get it for around 190 delivered so pretty good value for money if this performs as well as the JBC. And the first impressions are that this is actually a really high quality piece of kit so unlike a lot of the Chinese copies that you will see this is actually a really substantial piece of hardware. So I was quite taken aback when I took it out of the box. Firstly, with how heavy it is. This is, um, you know, really heavy. I think it comes in somewhere around six or seven kilos. Um, but actually, everything is built really well. So we've got um, a glass fiber reinforced plastic base, and it gives it a really high quality feel. There's not, uh, there's no real sharp bits. There's just this um, where the glass fiber is injected into here. Uh, where it's been snapped off here and not finished nicely but that's the only thing that I've noticed that is um, sort of not perfect on here so the top also has a, a nice plastic with sort of a soft touch effect we've got um, all of these metal pieces are very similar to the JBC so uh, you know everything's really nice it doesn't have that weird smell that a lot of Chinese plastics have uh, and really the only thing that I can see different from first glance is obviously we haven't got the inverted LCD but you could potentially remove the polarizing layer and flip it over uh, and have it as a negative display if you wanted to. There is a fingerprint on there actually. Um, but yeah, this is uh, very nice and similarly the handpiece has a, a nice silicone lead and the handpiece itself is actually also um, glass fiber reinforced. So I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera. Um, it's got the glass fiber in there which means it's going to be a very hard wearing device but it's essentially um, the same as the JBC and um, you know pretty good quality really. It also comes with a ESD lead so there's a port at the back um, and I'm not sure yet if the tip is permanently connected to mains earth or whether, whether this is connected directly to the tip and then if you want to connect it to your ESD station it's done through here so we'll do a little test a little bit later uh, but yeah very high quality really nice uh, piece of kit and it comes with uh, three soldering tips they're not particularly useful actually, so there's sort of a knife type tip and then two very fine tips. So one that's uh, bent, um, which actually works really well. I've, um, I've used these style in the past. It means you can hold your soldering iron and then get in vertically onto your pin. Um, but uh, it doesn't have the chisel, it's sort of a conical tip, which in my opinion isn't great for soldering. You often like that uh, very slight flat on the soldering iron tip so that you've got somewhere to wet the solder to properly and then it just comes with a plain conical tip as well. Right so there is one problem with this device which is slightly unfortunate and it's apparent when you turn it on and that is this particular one has the Chinese user interface so um, it has been pointed out to me that there is another clone of the JBC and it turns out it's absolutely identical to this unit apart from the silk screen on the front uh, but there's a brand called Jabe which have also um, selling this product and it's available on AliExpress with both the Chinese and the English menu option. But there is nothing built into the device that allows you to switch between languages. Unfortunately, the one at Banggood uh, they've sent to me has the Chinese user interface, but uh, actually all of the settings are pretty self-explanatory and obviously you can work out what's going on. Um, if you're not sure what the menu options are, you can also use your smartphone um, and Google Translate and if you turn on the camera option um, it gives all of the details anyway so you can go through and it gives all of the details about the menus anyway uh, but the menus are fairly self-explanatory um, so it's not uh, a complete disaster but I have written to BEST to see if they can send me the firmware for the English user interface because I believe there is a JTAG header inside which would mean that you can program the microcontroller uh, but other than that, actually, it seems pretty good. So what we're going to do is we'll do a little bit of soldering in a moment. We'll just have a quick look at the menu settings. There's a few interesting ones. So um, here you can set the tool power. So actually, 
you can dump up to 130 watts into the handpiece if you want to. That's too much for some of the tips. I think 80 watts is a more reasonable setting. Uh, but it's quite interesting that you can control the amount of power that goes into the tip if you want to. And that sort of stops the oscillation in the power into the unit. It means it can deliver a more consistent heat if you set it to something a little bit more um, sensible. Um, you can set the limits for uh, what you're allowed to set the temperature to. I think by default it's set to something high like 550 degrees C, but I can't imagine you ever needing to use that. Uh, I've set it down to 450, but obviously um, you can set it to whatever you want. Um, and there's there's a few settings. So there's a there's a beeper, which tells you when you've got to temperature, and every time you press the button, you can turn that off. There's a few things to do with the tool. So here we've got the um, standby temperature, and a few other settings along here. Uh, how long it takes before it goes into standby? How long it goes uh, it takes before it goes into sleep? Uh, an offset adjustment so you can calibrate it, and um, there's a few other settings along here to do with the backlight and that kind of thing. So certainly uh, it doesn't seem too bad at all. Um, at the moment, I've got one of the uh, supplied tips in it, but I did actually quickly test it with a genuine JBC tip and it works absolutely fine. So no problems whatsoever with uh, a standard JBC tip. Um, the only thing that I don't like about the JBC soldering stations, I'm not really sure what it is about them, but these tips don't seem to last very long at all. So uh, this is one that, I've probably used for about three months or so and you can see it's uh, heavily blackened and the tip seems to oxidize really easily so after a few weeks of use actually you're starting to have trouble with some of the soldering. If you compare it with the Metcals which is the station that I have at home this is the tip that I bought at the time that I bought the soldering station and what was that probably about six years ago five years ago something like that and it still looks in pretty good condition and actually the solder always wets on the tip. I've never really had to do any deep clean of this soldering iron tip. Um, and I've found that with a lot of the Metcal stations, I haven't really ever had to replace a tip despite doing thousands of solder joints with it. These JBC ones seem to oxidize really easily um, and don't seem to last quite as well. But I don't know uh, how the, the ones that come with the device will fare. Um, this one, um, yeah, I've just put on now, so we'll give it a try. Um, but it's slightly different construction to the JBC tip, as you can see, and there are quite a few different brands that sell compatible cartridges, so it may just be the JBC ones. Now there is a test that people love to do, and that is to solder onto a coin to see how well the soldering station performs. It's going to be a little bit unfair because I've only got a fairly fine tip, so not one of the wide chisel tips, but we'll give it a go. Uh, we'll just put a little bit of flux on the coin just because there is quite a bit of oxidation on it. And then we'll do a little bit of soldering onto here and see how long it takes. Looks like it's just starting to take here. And this is um, lead solder 62362. And yeah, we're starting to melt now onto there. And we can try the same thing with the Metcal. So I'll just add another bit of uh, flux onto this coin. I've got a similar size tip in the Metcal just to uh, take away any advantage there. Let's see how long this one takes. Looks like it's just starting to take there. And yeah, we're melted on there already. So you can see the Metcal significantly quicker. It's similarly rated for 80 watts. Uh, and that was a genuine JBC tip in the best soldering station. But the Metcal is very, very quick. That's why it's uh, even more expensive than the JBC. So I thought we'd do a little bit of soldering, just see how it performs, generally speaking, on a normal PCB. 
uh, and then we'll take a look inside the unit to see how well it's constructed. And this PCB is um, my controller board for my vacuum pickup tool, which I really need to finish um, because the, actually the, the project is really useful. So we'll do a little bit of soldering on here and see how it goes. Right, so we'll start with the micro. And we've got the, uh, the mechanic flux today, so we'll just run a bit of flux along the pads here. Then we can place the microcontroller on top. And probably stick a little bit more flux on there as well. There we go. And then we should just be able to solder these leads up. So I've got a little bit of solder on the soldering iron tip. It's not really the optimal tip for this type of soldering, but uh, it should do the job okay. Okay, and we'll just do the top side as well. And we'll just try getting that whisker of solder off with this uh, solder wick from Banggood. So this was a pack of five that I bought, it's pretty cheap. Uh, it's got various different widths, so we'll give this a crack. So it doesn't look like it's got that much flux in this wick. But that's not too bad, we'll just put a little bit more flux and then run the soldering iron along. Okay, that's not too bad. Uh, and then we'll stick the uh, regulator on. Actually, I'm mistaken, the top plane on this PCB is a 3v3, which is why this one's sucking all of the heat uh, away from the soldering iron. But you can see that flow is not too badly at all, really. Okay, so we'll place some of the smaller parts, and I'll swap out the tip for the one that was supplied. So that was using the JBC tip. And now we've got one of the fine tips, um, which was provided with the iron. Right, so we've got a couple of 0805 capacitors. Let's see how the tip responds. And yeah, you can see the problem with these very fine tips. Actually, the solder wants to um, tin onto the side of the tip rather than at the very end of the tip. So we can't actually wet that pad hugely well. We might be able to do it if we change the contact angle slightly, but this is the problem with super fine tips like this. There we go, we're sort of getting some wetting, but not right at the tip of it. So yeah, this is a little bit difficult with this tip.
yeah, I'm gonna have to swap this tip out. This isn't really working. The JBC one, not the brand, but the style of tip is way better. So there we go, that's just a little look at the soldering. I do not get on very well with these types of soldering tips. They're just too fine and the solder always wants to wet on the side of the tip rather than at the very tip. So when you're trying to solder properly, it just doesn't get the heat to the joint. So um, these type of tips are pretty much junk. I've never found a useful purpose for those. You're generally better off with something with a little bit of a chisel tip to it. Uh, and that means that you can uh, get your heat into your solder joint. Right, so it's pretty obvious where the bulk of the weight is coming from now once you've opened it up. We've got a big EI core transformer in there. I'm surprised they haven't opted for a switch mode power supply, to be honest, um, because these are really quite heavy and the shipping costs and everything like that are not um, cheap. But uh, this has been on for about half an hour now and it's sort of warm to the touch. Um, so I can kind of see why they put that fan in there. And the sound from that fan is not obnoxious, so it's not uh, too bad at all really. It's pretty quiet, it's just a gentle sound of air that you can hear. You can't really hear the fan itself. Uh, but in terms of the construction, it's not, not looking too bad at all really. So the transformer is held in place with this plastic cage. So that keeps the transformer nice and sturdy, but also helps prevent any vibrations from uh, being transferred to the casework. Because uh, on one of my old stations, the Antex, the whole case used to buzz every time that the heating element was activated. Um, so this is sort of an anti-vibration mounting as well. That's pretty nice. Uh, we've got all of our connections at the back, which are nicely shrouded. Um, so no uh, live contacts to come into contact with if you happen to have it open uh, while you were um, playing with it. And then uh, all of these wires are really flexible silicone. So again, nothing um, really to complain about there. Uh, we've got the two conductors which go off to detect when the handpiece is in the stand. So that's our yellow wire is electrically connected to this bit here. And when the um, station, uh, when the handle makes contact with the metal case, it knows it's in the stand. And similarly, when you're doing a tool change, it knows to turn off the heating element because it detects uh, again that the um, handpiece has been inserted into the tool changing spot. Now in terms of the electrical connectivity to the tip of the soldering iron, it looks like it's directly connected to mains earth through the IEC connector. And then there's also the binding post, which this is designed to plug into to connect to your mat or your wrist strap. And that's connected through a one meg resistor. So, um, you know, this is designed to connect to your mat and prevents it being directly connected to mains earth, but the tip is directly connected to mains earth. Right, and here we've got the main PCB, and there's not too many surprises here. So we've got a STM32 ARM microcontroller here, which appears to be routed out to this header. So we've got a row of ground pins at the back, and then a few signal lines which go off to the micro. So that looks, for all the world, like a JTAG header, which is matching the J-Link 20-pin connector. So if we can get the firmware for this, it looks like we can just connect up the J-Link and program it directly. We've got a couple of uh, MOSFETs here for controlling power into the heating element along with the current sensing resistor. Um, so this is where it goes off to the heating element. So all the power electronics is sort of at this end. Uh, and then down this end, we've got the analog electronics. So this is sort of the analog header. So we've got one pin that goes off to the handle to measure the temperature. They've got one pin that goes off to the parking uh, area so that it can detect the hand pieces back in the stand and then one other contact which goes off to the tool changing area so that it knows that you're changing the tool. And then we've got an analog multiplexer here and some op amps which are doing the reading of the voltages and turning it uh, into something that's suitable for reading on the ADC. Uh, we've got a five volt regulator here. So that's providing uh, power to the logic on here. And we've got a couple of other regulators here, but not really uh, too many surprises. And the construction is absolutely fine. They've left the label on the buzzer, which helps with uh, the volume, but uh, you can turn it off in the menus, so uh, no big deal really there. It's all uh, fused, so we've got a fuse on the PCB, 
and then we've got a fuse in the IEC connector to protect the transformer. So everything's looking uh, pretty promising actually, it's not too bad at all. So this is actually a really nice soldering station, I'm quite impressed with its performance and actually I can't tell any difference between it and the real thing, the JBC. Is it worth spending £200 on? Well, if you haven't got the money for the JBC and you still want something with the same kind of performance then it's probably worth buying but um, I still think the KSGER is uh, sort of unbeatable in terms of uh, price and performance because this does output 70 watts into the soldering iron um, so it's a pretty capable device and it keeps the temperature well regulated and you know this comes in at about £40 from Banggood. This is over four times the price but it is significantly better built. The handpiece is a lot nicer and obviously uh, the stand is designed for it. The tips are a little bit more expensive so the one thing that's really nice about this soldering station is that um, with the KSGEI you can get soldering iron tips. You can get a whole bundle for £20 uh, which is an absolute bargain. Uh, if you want genuine JBC tips I know they're roughly around £30 to £40 depending on which one you're buying. Um, you can buy um, knockoff um, tips and they're a lot cheaper but generally speaking these are going to be slightly more expensive tips um, because it's a slightly more capable and more expensive soldering station. This one can output 130 watts into the tip if it supports it so obviously if you're doing uh, heavy soldering this is going to be uh, a lot more capable. For general PCB work you're probably not going to notice the difference in terms of how well it does the soldering it's just generally the experience is going to be nicer with something that's a bit more professionally designed. Obviously there's moral implications so if you want to support the real brand JBC then you're probably not going to want to buy a Chinese version but not everyone has the budget for uh, you know the real brand and this isn't going to detract from the professional market which is what JBC is aimed at. Um, so you know that's up to you to make that decision uh, but this is a really well performing station I'm quite impressed. Um, obviously um, I'm going to send Banggood an email and just see if they're able to stock the English version um, because obviously the majority of the world is not going to want the Chinese user interface, they're going to want the English interface. Um, so we'll see what happens with that, but certainly I can rec recommend it. And with the 10% discount voucher you can get it for £190 on Banggood, so uh, pretty good value for money really. So hopefully you found the video useful. Uh, leave a comment down below if you've got any tests that you want me to perform or any questions or criticisms. But until next time, thanks for watching.